really even need the gospel after conversion? Hi, my name is Ted Rosenblatt, and I'm here with my father, Dr. Rod Rosenblatt, and this is Talks with Dad Rod. There's a common thing in many churches, uh, and it starts in the seminaries from what I've learned from you, that uh, pastors can be taught that if that once we have come to faith in Christ, that we don't need the gospel anymore. We don't really need the gospel anymore. We don't need that good news anymore. To put, use your phrase, we, we really just need marching orders. We need a to-do list. Yep. <clears throat> Very common. And comes from formal confessions. Usually the confessions will go into detail on this, and you'll find it there. It's really common in American Protestantism to hold that if the gospel has done its work, that is, you now have faith in Christ, it's completed, <clears throat> and your real need is just for instructions as to how to behave as a Christian. The classical Lutherans didn't believe that for a minute and took the opposite stance that because of the old Adam in us, strong or weak, in my case very strong, we still needed to hear the gospel preached to us every single Sunday. That it was oxygen, that it was food for the, for the starving. Take a look at, at your church's formal confession and see if there's anything like that. Were I to attend a church where the pastor actually was trained to believe that I didn't hear the gospel anymore, I'd go find another church because of my known need to hear it again and again and again and again and again. Um, and I couldn't possibly attend a church where the pastor was taught that I no longer needed to hear the gospel. So it has to do with confessions and formal training. And the pastor, if he was a good student, followed the confession and was trained into it by the faculty of a seminary. Isn't the implication or sometimes the explicit teaching also connected to that? I think we, don't, we, we centers don't really seem to need the extra. We don't, I don't, in my opinion, I don't think we need it made explicit because we're so good at it anyway. Isn't the implication often that if I am not doing the thing, uh, let me back up, let me go bigger, that I am in charge of maintaining my faith and maintaining my salvation, my status in heaven through those works and yeah. how well I do yeah. with my sin. Hopefully it's always the goal, you know, the way it's talked about is though it's on an upward climb uh, improvement. Isn't then the implication that uh, as a sinner, isn't the most of me speaking for me personally, isn't the obvious answer then, wow, okay, well, um, part of the work then is to make sure I'm doing better in all these different endless, countless sure. ways. Sure. Or else. Isn't there an or else that's sort of built into that? Yeah. <clears throat> we confess, the old Lutherans confessed that the law was word of God, meant what it said, but the old Lutherans said, it gives no power within itself to obey or to do what it says. None. Luther at some point, and I want to bring this out separately in a more explicit way, Luther had talked about that we need to confess our good works also to yeah. be absolved. Yes, to be absolved of our good works. Imagine you have to confess your good works <laughs> as a fail, yeah. right? Yeah, not, yeah. Not, not only are you having to confess the things you know are sinful, right? Let's say you, uh, you, 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 the you, obvious. you were lusting, you were, you know, usually us guys, it's fairly simple. You were, you were lusting, you were, you were wanting somebody else's stuff, you know. Sure, coveting. Coveting. But what if you actually had to confess I crappily helped my neighbor this week right. and I need to be absolved of that. Right. It keeps things in a sharper focus um, for us as sinners, I think, to, for Luther to stress that. But uh, most people feel it in the other way. That is, <clears throat> no matter what you preach, Pastor, from Scripture, 
I do badly what I'm supposed to be doing, and it's ever present, it's ever in my consciousness, never gone from it. Um, so no matter how you lay that out, I'm going to go into a fail mode, and I know it. It's happened so many times, I have no doubt about it. This is kind of another episode question, but it makes me want to ask, am I closer to the cross? I've got, let's say I've got two poles, right? Two polar opposites or something like that. Am I closer to the cross when I'm on my knees, absolutely fearing and in failure? Or am I, am I closer to the cross when I'm winning? Winning, you yeah. know? Sounding like George Carlin. Yeah. Winning. You know, and you've got the, and you've got the, you're, you're, you've, you're absolutely killing it in your eyes. Yeah. Uh, uh, in, in, in not, your faith. Not that. The other. <laughs> <laughs> always the other. Because the poor people who suffer with questions like these, and we're always trying to help them out, the, the temptation is always, as you know, to say, I'm further from the cross when I'm despairing. Right. I'm, I'm further from right. the cross. Closer to doubt. When, when, when I only see failures, I don't see myself winning. Yep. And as a matter of fact, from, Lutheran, from the Lutheran perspective, from my, from my understanding, is that they're actually closer yes. to Christ yes. in that condition yes. than they are if they were winning. That's why the Pharisees are spoken of as not being able to get into heaven or, you know, yep. like a camel through the, through I the eye of the needle. needle. Yep. Yep. The, the, <clears throat> it's, it's paradoxical. But there are many verses that would lead us to that conclusion, which is not obvious. We think, especially Americans, think of winning, success, glory, um, congratulations, honor. It's, it's wired into Americans. And uh, nothing could be further from the theological truth. <clears throat> that is, we're always dependent, always dependent on the same thing, but it isn't obvious to us. The, the good preacher lays out maybe some strong passage of law in either testament and into that wisely and carefully inserts Christ and his work and how his work satisfies his own law in our place, in our stead, for us. So his perfect works are laid over even our best of our works. Yep. Which I won't literally translate from scripture again. Yeah. We will always avoid this. I, I hate that. I wish we could say it. Everybody goes, you can't say that. You can't say the actual translation. <laughs> okay, we're done for this one. Hope uh, this is helpful for you. Come to 1517.org for more and visit us on social media and we will talk to you soon. Thank you for joining us on Talks with Dad Rod, part of the 1517 Podcast Network. This podcast and all 1517's content is made possible through financial support by listeners just like you. Please visit 1517.org for more, and please consider clicking on the donate button and making a recurring or one-time contribution to help us share this good news in a world which so desperately needs it. <laughs>